Praise the Lord. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, verse 14, that is written, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tyratyra, which worshipped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. And when she was baptized, and her household, she besought us, saying, If ye have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come into my house and abide there. And she constrained us. In Acts chapter 16, verse 14, this certain woman named Lydia, a cell of purple, the sea of Tyratyra, the word of God says, she worshipped God. However, even though in Acts chapter 16, verse 14, though she was a worshiper of God, she was not yet saved. She was not yet on her way to heaven. Just because a person may profess to be a Christian and even worship God, it does not mean they're on their way to heaven. It does not mean that they are saved. However, because she was a worshiper of God, the Word of God says that she heard us, heard the apostles preaching. As it is written in Mark chapter 16, verse 20, and they, the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere. What did they preach? They preached the gospel of Christ. For Jesus Christ says in Mark chapter 16, verse 15, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 20, And they, the apostles, went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. Amen. For the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto us. Therefore the apostles who obeyed the Lord Jesus Christ, who went forth and preached everywhere and preached the gospel, they did so from the word of God. God. For the gospel of Christ is this, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. For the Bible says in Psalm 138 verse 2, for thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. God's word is his final authority. And in order to preach the gospel, it must be according to the scriptures. In order to believe the gospel to be born again, it must be according to the scriptures. As it is written in 1 Peter, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The gospel cannot be preached without the word of God. You cannot separate the gospel of Christ from God's word. You cannot separate Jesus Christ from God's word. You cannot separate the faith, the Christian faith, from the word of God. Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. In Acts chapter 16, verse 14, And a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple of the city of Tyratyra, which worshiped God, heard us. She heard the apostles preaching, preaching the gospel from the word of God, as it is written once again, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. And she heard us. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God, whose heart the Lord opened. Many hear us preach the gospel, 
yet they do not get saved. And why is it they do not get saved? And why is it that this woman, Lydia, she got saved here in the Bible? It's because of the state of the heart. When this woman, Lydia, heard the apostles preaching the gospel from God's word, it is written whose heart the Lord opened. The Lord was able to open her heart to hear that the gospel which was preached from the apostles according to the scriptures. And as she was able for the Lord to open her heart, she was able to believe for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and was baptized so that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God and faith without works is dead. She heard, she believed, and she was baptized according to her faith and her household because the Lord was able to open her heart. Yet in Matthew chapter 13, it is written, In Matthew chapter 13, verse 14, the Lord Jesus Christ says, And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, By hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. Verse 15, For this people's heart is wax gross, and their ears of dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with the ears, and should understand with the heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. At this time, in Matthew chapter 13, those who heard the Lord Jesus Christ refused to re repent, refused to be converted, because their hearts were wax gross. And as their hearts were wax gross, they were dull of hearing. Their ears were dull of hearing, and their eyes they close. Lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand the heart, and should be converted. Why were their eyes closed? Why were their ears dull of hearing? Because their hearts were wax gross. And as we preach the gospel today, we can see it happen with so many from the around the world, especially from the West. They will literally put their hands to their ears to close their ears to the preaching of the gospel. Now, putting their hand to the ear like this, they can still hear the preaching of the gospel, but they do so as a sign of their heart that they are shutting their own ears to the preaching of the gospel as faith without works is dead and their faith against the gospel they'll do this work of faith a faith against the gospel and take in their hands and close in their ears to the preaching of the gospel because their hearts are wax gross their ears are dull of hearing their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand the heart and be converted. You see, many, their hearts are wax gross. And why are so many hearts wax gross, especially from the West, even amongst professing Christians? The Lord Jesus Christ gives to us a warning in the book of Luke, Chapter 21, verse 34, Christ warns his disciples before he comes again here in these last days, and take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day, the day of the Lord, come upon you on Awares. They would have ears and not be able to hear, eyes and not be able to see, and their hearts are wax gross, for they have not taken heed to themselves, and their hearts are overcharged 
with surfeiting, with drunkenness, with the cares of this life. And they close their eyes to the many signs of the times that are round about us. They've closed their ears to heed to the warnings from God's word, lest they should understand with their heart, because their heart so wax grows, they are overcharged with surfeiting, with drunkenness, with the cares of this life. Therefore, they cannot see with their eyes, hear with their ears, or understand with their heart that Christ's coming is drawing nigh, that they are not ready. This is why Christ gives his disciples a warning to take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life. We hear on the streets of Bangkok, Thailand, as I preach the gospel of Christ, not only have many from the West, not only their hearts hardened to the preaching the gospel, that they would literally shut their ears to the preaching the gospel, turn their faces away so their eyes do not see and witness the preach of the gospel because their hearts are hard lest they should understand and be converted. But even many professing Christians from the West. How can this be? Because they have not taken heed to themselves. They have not guarded their hearts. Their hearts have waxed gross. They're overcharged with surfeiting, with drunkenness, and with the cares of this life. Therefore they have eyes and see not, and ears they hear not, and hearts they have that understand not. So much so that even here on the streets of Bangkok, Thailand, professing Christians, missionaries from the West, are against the preaching of the gospel. Though Jesus Christ says in this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. They're against the preaching of the gospel because their hearts are hardened to the Lord. They have not taken heed to themselves. Their hearts are wax gross. Their hearts are overcharged with surfeiting, with drunkenness and the cares of this life. Years ago, I met with a missionary from Australia at the Bangkok Christian Guest House, which is a guest house for traveling missionaries, traveling through this part of the world, or even serving the Lord here in Thailand. It is a guest house just for missionaries or professing Christians. And as this missionary was a missionary from Australia to Nepal, was passing through Thailand, after I preached the gospel one evening, I walked over to the Bangkok Christian Guest House to meet this missionary in the lobby, as it had been years since we had seen each other to have blessed fellowship together. And there in the lobby, we sat on the couches near the, the elevator and was having fellowship together late into the night after I finished preaching the gospel that night. As we're fellowshipping together, a Western man went to the elevator to go to his room. Of course, he was a professing Christian and even a missionary. And as he saw me on the couch, talking with his brother in Christ from Australia, who was a missionary in Nepal, passing through here to Thailand, as we're fellowshipping together, he looked over to me to begin yelling at me. And he says, was that you I saw earlier this evening yelling? I corrected him and said, yes, that was me preaching the gospel. He then said to me that that was the most stupidest thing he had ever seen. Now there's a lot of things to see here in Thailand. There's a lot of dumb dead idols that are being worshipped. Yet he thought the preach of the gospel was more stupid than worshipping dumb dead idols. There are many things to see here on the streets of Bangkok, Thailand. And there in the area that I was preaching at, which he witnessed the preach of the gospel, it was the Pat Pong Road that night, which is filled with bars, filled with uh, harlots, filled with whoremongers from around the world, filled with drunkenness, and they even have shows that they, 
they announce, advertise in front of their bars of the different sex shows that take place in the bars, including bestiality, having sex with animals. Yet this man, who must have been in the area where that takes place as he witnessed me preaching the gospel to Pat Pong Road, he considered the preaching the gospel to be much more stupid than bars filled with harlots and whoremongers from the world and drunkenness and even bestiality. He considered the preach of the gospel to be more stupid than that. There in the area that the Bangkok Christian Guest House is located, if you go to the main road, Selim Road, there was quite a few sodomites and massage parlors advertising to sodomites with very effeminate men trying to lure customers into their massage parlors. Yet this man, this so-called missionary from the West, considered the preach of the gospel much more stupid than that. There on the main road of Selim Road, across from the Bangkok Christian Guest House, not only are there many sodomites from around the world, and effeminate men who are advertising and trying to lure men into the massage parlors, they even sell sex DVDs out in the open with the covers of those DVDs. And if you're not careful, they'll put the pictures of what takes place in those DVDs into your face. Now for me and my family, because we dress like Christians and they see this book in my hands, the Word of God, the authorized version of the Holy Bible, they run from us. But for others who are not on guard, they'll put the pictures of those DVDs of what takes place in those DVDs in your face. Pictures of fornication and adultery and even sodomy. Yet this man, this missionary from the West, considered the preach of the gospel to be much more stupid than that. As it is written in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. As this man yelled at me, said, was that you I saw yelling earlier? I said, yes, that was me preaching. He said to me, that was the most stupid thing I've ever seen here, here on the streets of Bangkok, Thailand. His elevator opened up, he walked into his elevator, and out of anger, he pressed the wrong button. You see on the elevators, there's a button to shut the doors, and there's a button to hold the doors open. And he was so enraged at the sight of myself, filled with such hate, towards the preach of the gospel and myself a preach of the gospel that when he got into the elevator he quickly tried to shut the elevator doors but he was pressing the wrong button and holding the doors open of that elevator so i preached this scripture from to him from the sofa that was sitting on there in the lobby of the Banga christian guest house next to the elevator for the preach of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. And he, with his finger on the button, holding the elevator doors open, use the name of the Lord, the name of Jesus Christ. For neither is there salvation than any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. He used that name, that holy name, in vain out of hatred towards the gospel out of hatreds towards a man as myself that preaches the gospel and of hatred to god's word god's final authority that declares that the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness but unto us which are saved it is the power of god such hate came out of this man's mouth from his heart that he cursed the name of the Lord. And yet, he was a missionary from the West. 
How could this happen? Because his heart was wax gross. How could this happen? Because his heart is not right with God. God seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. There are many that on the outward appearance may appear to be a Christian, may even call themselves a Christian, may even make money from Christians as a missionary. On the outside, they look like a missionary. They talk like a missionary. However, their heart is not right with God. They don't take heed to themselves. For many of them, especially from the West, their hearts are overcharged with surfeiting, with eating and drinking, with drunkenness, with the cares of this life, money and the things that money can buy. And as their hearts are overcharged, their ears are dull of hearing and their eyes they have closed that they see not and cannot understand with their hearts. They cannot understand the things of God as God's ways are much higher than our ways, as high as the heaven is to the earth, so great are God's ways compared to our ways. Because their hearts are hard. With the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. This is why we preach repentance. It begins with the heart. The Bible warns us in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 15, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God. For by grace are ye saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, and not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians chapter 2. However, the Bible warns, warns Christians, you can fail of the grace of God. For the grace of God which bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men, teaching us to deny worldliness and ungodly lusts. You can fail the grace of God, the grace of God which bringeth salvation, as the Bible warns us, looking diligently, lest any man fell of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel meat sold his birthright. God in his word uses this example from the Old Testament to warn Christians of failing the grace of God. Whose example does God's word use? Esau. What did Esau lose? His birthright. Why would God in his word use this example to warn Christians of failing the grace of God? Because you can lose your birthright. There are many professing Christians that believe that once you're born again, you can never be unborn. That once you become a child of God, you can never not become a child of God. Yet the Bible and warning professing Christians of failing the grace of God uses the Old Testament example of Esau who lost his birthright. You can lose your birthright as Esau did. As it is written, lest there be any fornicator profane person as Esau who for one more so meets sold his birthright. For you know how that afterward when he would have inherited the blessing he was rejected for he found no place of repentance though he sought it carefully with tears take heed you can get to the place where you can no longer repent your heart can grow so hard in sin that it was impossible for you to repent take heed you can come to the place where you inherit the blessing of god but would be rejected 
And though you seek repentance with tears, you won't be able to find it because of the heart state, the heart being hard. Take heed to yourselves. And Acts chapter 16. In the book of Acts chapter 16, verse 14, it is written of Lydia, a seller purple of the city of Tara Tara, which worshiped God, that she heard us, she heard the apostles preaching the gospel from God's word, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Her heart was open. The Lord was able to open her heart. It's important where your heart is when it comes to the preaching of the gospel of Christ. And because the Lord was able to open her heart, she was able to attend to the things which were spoken of Paul. And in verse 15, and when she was baptized, therefore the apostles and Paul the apostle must have preached baptism. As Jesus Christ says in Mark chapter 16, verse 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. She attended to the things which were spoken of Paul. And then in verse 15, she was baptized and her household. Therefore the apostles preach baptism unto her and she whose heart the Lord opened, obeyed. For faith without works is dead and she was baptized as well as her household. And it all was because the Lord was able to open her heart. Where is your heart? Just because in the outside you may look like a Christian, where is your heart? Just because you may say the right words with your lips, where is your heart? Just because you can give mental, acknowledgement to the truth of God's word, where is your heart? For God seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. A Christian is not one who is one outwardly, but a Christian is that of the heart. For the heart man believeth unto righteousness. As we preach the gospel of Christ, on these streets here in Bangkok, Thailand, to souls from all over the world, as it is written, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then show the end come. And we go to the places where the many souls from the many nations of the world are gathered to preach the gospel from God's infallible, inerrant, inspired word to them. For the word of the Lord endureth forever, and this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. And though they may dress differently, some may dress in fancy clothes, some may dress poorly, though they may have different shades of brown or different skin colors coming from the different nations of the world and wear different styles of clothing, one thing we're able to see through the preaching of God's word is their heart. As I've said, many from the West will close their ears to the preach of the gospel or turn their faces away as if they don't see the preach of the gospel. And as my family faithfully gives out gospel tracts as I preach the gospel, many from the West won't even see them given gospel tracts out. They'll actually turn their head and look the other way so they won't have to see that a gospel tract was offered to them because their hearts are hard. Their hearts are wax gross. Their hearts are overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. However, as we preach the gospel to many souls of the many nations of the world, we can also witness God opening the hearts of those whose hearts are open to the preaching of the gospel, especially to those that are from the Middle East. As we preach the gospel souls from all over the world, here in the streets of Bangkok, Thailand, there are many from the Middle East 
the Arabic countries. And as they preach the gospel, we can witness their hearts opened. The Lord opening their hearts to the preaching of the gospel. And just this past Wednesday, on the Middle East Street in Bangkok, Thailand, which is also a big nickname, Soy Arab. Soy means back street or back alleyway. And there's so many Middle Eastern people there, they've nicknamed it Soy Arab, but officially the name of the street is actually called the Middle East Street. And as I preached the gospel there this past Wednesday night, a Middle Eastern man who was listening to preach in the gospel, who stayed there most of the time, he was well-dressed, he had some earphones around his neck, which looked like expensive earphones or expensive for one such as me. Therefore, he had money. He was well-dressed, but he listened to the preaching of the gospel. When I finished preaching the gospel for the night, he called my son over to him. So my son walked over to him with gospel tracks to talk to him. And this Middle Eastern man, he was not able to speak. Every time he began to ask a question, and all he wanted to ask my son was, was he with me? He couldn't get that sentence out. He would begin stuttering. Now we, he could speak English, he knew the English words, but he lost the ability to speak any language. And as he would try to stutter words out, he was holding back tears. Finally, my son brought this man to me and as he came to ask me a question, he could not make a sentence, though he tried to speak words, and he knew the words to speak. It was not a language bearer that was problem. The problem was he was not able to speak. And finally, it became manifest why he was not able to speak. For when he tried to speak a sentence, he broke down in tears, bowed his head right there on that street, head down, tears coming out of his eyes, weeping and crying on that street. What had happened? The Lord had touched his heart. His heart was open to what we were preaching. So I got a gospel track out of the Arabic tongue, gave it to this man. He opened that gospel track out. I don't know what page he read or what he read in that track, but whatever he read struck him right in the heart. He took the track, put it at his heart, and continued to cry, weeping right there on that street. God had touched his heart by the preaching of his word. As we preach the gospel around the world, we witness this happen to many places, to many souls from around the world because the Lord is able to open their hearts and they come under conviction. As it is written in the book of Acts chapter two, when the apostles preached the gospel from the word of God, it is written in Acts chapter two, verse 37. Now when they, Jews from many nations of the world, they're at Jerusalem at this time, in Acts chapter two. Now when they heard this, heard the apostle Peter preaching the gospel, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart. And said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? The preaching of the gospel from the apostles was able to prick their hearts. For their hearts were not yet hardened to the gospel of Christ. Their hearts were opened by the Lord and the preaching of the gospel was able to prick their hearts. And it's the same around the world when people's hearts are right with God. Where is your heart? And these last days we're living in, Christ gives us a warning to take heed to yourselves. Lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting, drunkenness, and the cares of this life. And because of that, your hearts will become hard to the Lord, will become wax gross, and your ears will not be able to hear, become dull of hearing, and your eyes will not be able to see and understand the heart 
and be converted. Where is your heart? God seeth not as man seeth. Man looketh on the outward appearance, but God looketh on the heart. Therefore God commend, commandeth all men everywhere to repent. It starts from your heart. Repent. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us, Lord, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God bless you. We're praying for you. Praying for you that hear this video, hear the preaching of God's word, that you'd repent, that you get your heart right with God, so that God can open your heart, that you may have eyes to see, ears to hear, a heart to understand, and be converted. God bless you. We're praying for you.